Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Have any enjoyed that beautiful singing tonight? Yeah. Amen. You've done an outstanding job. We appreciate our singers and uh, appreciate the folks who come to help us in this. And uh, they're a part of us. So we just uh, appreciate the blessings of God. And uh, we uh, like for you to be praying also. There's a, a husband and wife, Kay and Don Martin. And I believe maybe next Tuesday, this Tuesday, uh, Kay is uh, going to have some uh, surgery, serious surgery in Lexington, and she needs a touch from the Lord, and her husband Don needs a touch too. So keep them on your prayer list to be praying much for them. And uh, we do appreciate the opportunity to be here again tonight. I want you to remember now we'll be back in the Lord's willing next uh, month on the fourth Saturday night from 7 to 8. And uh, we're going to be here just as long as the Lord says be here and uh, do our best to. And we'd like to be able to help you today, no matter what your problem is, no matter what you're going through, we know a God in heaven that still is in control. Brother Jonathan, there's a God that not, looks down and he knows where we're at. He knows where you're at today and he's able to take care of your every situation. I want to begin reading tonight from 1 Peter just for a very few minutes. Second chapter and we're going to read about 10 verses. And by the help of the Lord, we'd like to minister just for a few minutes. Beginning in verse 1, it says, We're for laying aside all malice, and all guile and hypocrisies and envyings and all evil speaking. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a lively stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in sign a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, as an holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which hath not obtained now hath not which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. I'd like to talk to us tonight for just a very few minutes on a thought that God is still calling. Amen. God is still calling, and you out there tonight, you may feel like that you're not worth anything. And that's what the world wants to tell you. Brother Joe, they want to tell you you're not worth anything. You can't do anything, and they want to tell God's people that they are the trash of the earth. But I'm going to tell you today, the Bible tells us here, we're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy people, a peculiar people, that should show forth the praises of him who hath called us out of darkness and to his marvelous light. So today, what we're needing to realize in the day that we're living in, we need to realize that we are something in this world. I think the Christians is what's holding this world uh, together today. You take the Christians out of this world and you're going to be in trouble. There's a lot of trouble in the world right now. There's things going on that uh, probably you would have never thought you would ever hear or ever see. But the thing about it is it lets us know that Jesus is on his way pretty quick. I don't know when he's coming, Brother Jonathan, but I know he's coming back, and I know that he's coming in an hour that you're not looking for him. But what we've got to do today, we've still got uh, to realize that God is calling his people for a work. 
We've got a work to do. You've got to work. You may say, well, preacher, I've not got much to do. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Well, how does God bless you? What does he bless you in doing? If he blesses you in singing, sing. If he blesses you praying around the altar for people, pray around that altar. If he's got you to be a prayer warrior, then be a prayer warrior. If he's got you to be a teacher, teach. If he's got you to be a preacher, preach. Whatever God blesses you doing, then that's what you need to do. And if you'll do what God has called you to do and what God has laid upon you to do, then you're going to find out that God is going to add more to you. We read about the man that got the five talents that his master gave him five talents and went on a journey. And when he came back, the man brought the five talents plus he had some interest. He had uh, uh, five more talents with him. And then, you know, at the, at the end, uh, uh, when the one that had the one talent, he uh, uh, had not, he, he didn't do anything with it. And he brought it back. They took that ta talent and gave it to the one uh, that had the 10 talents. So he ended up with 11 talents. So there's a lot that you can do. You may say, well, I can't do much. Well, have you tried?